Hi, my name is Alex. I am 17 years old and I live in a small village in Brazil. My village is very beautiful. It is surrounded by green hills and rivers. But there is one problem. In my village, we only speak Portuguese. I want to learn English. So, I decided to go to a big city and join an English school. My family is very supportive. My mother hugged me and said, Alex, you can do it. We believe in you. My father gave me some money and said, Take care, son. We will miss you. My younger sister, Maria, cried and said, Please come back soon. I packed my bag with clothes, books, and my favorite snacks. I took the bus to the big city. It was a long journey. The bus was crowded, but I was excited. I looked out the window and saw new places. There were tall buildings, busy streets, and many people. When I reached the city, I felt a bit scared. Everything was new and different. I took a taxi to my new school. The driver was friendly and talked a lot. I tried to understand, but his English was very fast. Finally, we reached the school. It was big and beautiful. There were many students from different countries. I went to the office to register. The lady at the desk smiled and said, Welcome, Alex. We are happy to have you here. She gave me a map of the school and showed me my classroom. I took a deep breath and walked to my class. I was nervous but also excited to start this new adventure. My first day at the English school was full of surprises. I entered the classroom and saw students from many countries. They all smiled and said hello. Our teacher, Mr. John, was very kind. He introduced himself and asked us to introduce ourselves. When it was my turn, I stood up and said, Hello, my name is Alex. I am from Brazil. Everyone clapped and smiled. It made me feel happy and welcomed. Mr. John said, Welcome, Alex. We are glad to have you here. We started with simple words and sentences. Mr. John used pictures and games to teach us. It was fun. We learned words like apple, dog, and car. We also learned to say sentences like, This is a book, and... I am a student. During the break, I made new friends. There was Maria from Spain, Ahmed from Egypt, and Lee from China. We tried to talk in English. It was funny because sometimes we did not understand each other, but we laughed and tried again. After school, I went to my new room. It was small but cozy. I shared it with Ahmed. He was very friendly and helped me with my English homework. We talked about our families and dreams. He wanted to be a doctor, and I wanted to be an engineer. Before sleeping, I called my family. My mother was happy to hear my voice. I told them about my day and my new friends. They were proud of me. My sister said, I miss you, Alex. I said, I miss you too, Maria. I will come home soon. The next day was a holiday. I decided to explore the city. I asked Ahmed to join me. He agreed, and we made a plan. We took a bus to the city center. The city was huge and full of life. There were shops, restaurants, and parks. We first went to a big park. It was beautiful with many trees and flowers. We saw people jogging, playing, and having picnics. We sat on a bench and talked. Ahmed told me about his country, Egypt. He showed me pictures of the pyramids. It was fascinating. Next, we visited a famous museum. It had many old and interesting things. There were paintings, sculptures, and historical items. We learned a lot about the history and culture of different countries. The guide spoke in English, and we tried to understand as much as we could. After the museum, 
We were hungry. We went to a small restaurant. The menu was in English, and we tried to read it. We ordered burgers and fries. The food was delicious. We talked about our school and friends while eating. In the evening, we went to a market. It was colorful and lively. There were many stalls selling clothes, toys, and food. We bought some souvenirs for our families. I bought a beautiful bracelet for my sister, Maria. We returned to our room tired but happy. It was a wonderful day. Exploring the city was fun and exciting. I felt more confident about my English and made great memories with Ahmed. Days turned into weeks, and I started to feel more comfortable in the big city and at school. My English was improving every day. Mr. John was an excellent teacher. He made learning fun and interesting. We played games, sang songs, and did many activities. One day, Mr. John gave us a special assignment. We had to write a short story in English. I was excited but also nervous. I wanted to write a good story. I thought about my village and my family. I decided to write a story about a boy who travels to a big city to learn English. I worked hard on my story. Ahmed helped me with the difficult words. When I finished, I was proud of my work. Mr. John read my story and said, Good job, Alex. Your story is wonderful. It made me very happy. Our school also organized many activities. We had sports day, music day, and culture day. On sports day, I played soccer with my friends. We won the match and everyone cheered. On music day, we sang songs from our countries. I sang a Brazilian song and my friends clapped and sang along. On culture day, we wore traditional clothes and shared food from our countries. It was a lot of fun. Living in the city was a big change for me, but I was learning and growing. I missed my family, but I knew I was doing something important. I was making new friends, learning a new language, and experiencing new things. I felt proud of myself. Life in the big city was not always easy. There were many challenges. Sometimes I felt homesick. I missed my family, my village, and my friends. The city was noisy and busy. It was very different from my quiet village. One day, I felt very sad. I had a difficult day at school. I did not understand the lesson, and I made many mistakes. I felt frustrated and wanted to give up. Ahmed noticed and said, Don't worry, Alex. Learning a new language is not easy. We all make mistakes. You are doing great. His words made me feel better. I remembered why I came to the city. I wanted to learn and grow. I decided not to give up. I worked harder and asked for help when I needed it. Mr. John and my friends were always ready to help me. Another challenge was money. Life in the city was expensive. I had to be careful with my spending. I started looking for a part-time job. After searching for a while, I found a job at a small cafe. The owner, Mr. Silva, was very kind. He said, You can work here after school. I will help you with your English, too. On my first day, I felt nervous. The restaurant was busy, and there were many customers. Mr. Silva introduced me to the other staff. They were friendly and supportive. I put on my uniform and started my training. My job was to take orders, serve food, and help in the kitchen. Taking orders was the most challenging part. Customers spoke quickly, and sometimes I could not understand them. I felt embarrassed when I had to ask them to repeat their orders. One day, a customer got angry because I misunderstood his order. He said, I asked for a salad, not a sandwich. I felt terrible and apologized. Mr. Silva noticed and came to help. 
He said to the customer, I am sorry for the mistake. This is Alex's first week here. Please be patient. The customer calmed down, and I corrected the order. After the customer left, Mr. Silva said, Don't worry, Alex. Mistakes happen. You are doing well. Let's practice together. He took some menus and practiced taking orders with me. He spoke slowly and clearly, helping me understand the different dishes and how to take orders correctly. Mr. Silva also taught me some useful phrases like, How can I help you? And would you like anything else? Practicing these phrases helped me feel more confident. He encouraged me to keep practicing and not to be afraid of making mistakes. As the days passed, I started to feel more comfortable. I got better at understanding customers and taking orders. My English improved and I gained more confidence. Working as a waiter was a great way to practice my English and learn new words and phrases. Working at the restaurant was a learning experience. I made many mistakes, but I learned from them. Mr. Silva was very supportive and always encouraged me to keep trying. He said, Mistakes are a part of learning. Don't be afraid to make them. One day, a customer asked for a glass of water with no ice. I misunderstood and brought a glass of water with ice. The customer looked surprised and said, I asked for no ice. I apologized and quickly corrected the mistake. I felt embarrassed, but Mr. Silva said, It's okay, Alex. You did well to fix it quickly. Another time, I struggled to understand a customer with a strong accent. He ordered a rare steak, but I thought he said a rare cake. I went to the kitchen and realized my mistake. I quickly went back and clarified the order. The customer laughed and said, It's okay. English is hard. We both laughed, and it made me feel better. These experiences taught me to listen carefully and not be afraid to ask for clarification. I learned to say, Can you please repeat that? Or, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Can you say it again? Most customers were patient and understanding, which helped me feel more confident. Mr. Silva also gave me tips on improving my listening skills. He said, Listen to English podcasts and practice with native speakers. I followed his advice and started listening to English podcasts on my way to work. I also tried to have more conversations with native speakers at the restaurant. Learning from mistakes was an important part of my journey. Each mistake was a lesson that helped me improve. I felt more confident and determined to keep learning and growing. As I became more confident in my job, I started to build relationships with the regular customers. Mr. Silva encouraged me to engage with them. He said, Customers appreciate friendly service. Don't be afraid to talk to them. I started by greeting customers with a smile and saying, Hello, how are you today? It was a simple phrase, but it made a big difference. Customers responded positively and started to recognize me. I learned their names and their favorite dishes. It made them feel special and valued. One regular customer, Mrs. Thompson, always ordered a cup of coffee and a slice of pie. She was very kind and liked to chat. She said, Your English is getting better, Alex. Her words motivated me to keep improving. Another customer, Mr. Brown, loved talking about soccer. He found out that I liked soccer too, and we often talked about our favorite teams. These conversations helped me practice my English in a natural and enjoyable way. Building relationships with customers made my job more enjoyable. I felt more connected and appreciated. It also improved my speaking and listening skills. I learned new words and phrases from these interactions, which helped me in my studies and daily life.
Mr. Silva noticed my progress and praised me. He said, You are doing great, Alex. Keep up the good work. His encouragement meant a lot to me. It made me feel proud of my achievements and motivated to keep improving. Balancing my job and studies was challenging, but I managed it with careful planning. I made a schedule that allowed me to study, work, and have some free time. Mr. Silva was very understanding and flexible with my work hours. I worked at the restaurant in the evenings and on weekends. During the day, I attended classes and studied. I used my free time at work to review my vocabulary and practice speaking with customers and colleagues. It was a busy schedule, but I enjoyed it. Time management was crucial. I made a to-do list every day, prioritizing my tasks. I set aside specific times for studying, working, and relaxing. It helped me stay organized and focused. Mr. John also gave us tips on managing our time. He said, break your study sessions into smaller parts. Take short breaks to rest and refresh your mind. I followed his advice and found it very effective. It helped me stay productive and avoid burnout. Ahmed and I often studied together. We helped each other with homework and practice speaking. Having a study partner made it easier and more enjoyable. We also shared tips on managing our time and balancing work and studies. Balancing work and study was not easy, but with determination and good planning, I managed it well. It taught me the importance of time management and discipline. I felt proud of my ability to handle both responsibilities and continue making progress in my English learning journey. Working at the cafe was a good experience. I learned many new words and phrases. I talked to customers and made new friends. It also helped me manage my money better. I saved some money and sent it to my family. Through these challenges, I learned important lessons. I learned to be strong, to work hard, and to never give up. I realized that every challenge was an opportunity to learn and grow. I felt more confident and capable. As I continued my studies, I realized that remembering new words was very important. Mr. John gave us many tips on how to remember words. He said, the key to learning a new language is practice and repetition. One technique Mr. John taught us was using flashcards. I wrote new words on one side of the card and their meanings on the other side. I practiced with the flashcards every day. I also made sentences with the new words to understand their usage better. Another technique was creating a vocabulary notebook. I wrote down new words, their meanings, and example sentences in a small notebook. I carried the notebook everywhere. Whenever I had some free time, I read the words and tried to remember them. Mr. John also suggested watching English movies and listening to English songs. He said, watching movies and listening to songs can help you learn new words and understand their pronunciation. I watched many English movies with subtitles. I listened to English songs and sang along. It was fun and helpful. I also used a dictionary app on my phone. Whenever I saw or heard a new word, I looked it up in the dictionary. The app also had audio pronunciations, which helped me learn the correct pronunciation. Ahmed and I practiced together. We played word games and quizzes. We challenged each other to remember new words. It made learning fun and competitive. I also tried to use new words in my daily conversations. It helped me remember them better. Learning new words was like collecting treasures. Each new word I learned was a step closer to becoming fluent in English. I felt proud of my progress and motivated to learn more. Improving my accent was another important goal. I wanted to speak English clearly and confidently. Mr. John gave us many tips on how to improve our accent. 
He said, "Listening and imitating are the best ways to improve your accent." One technique was listening to native speakers. I watched English news, TV shows, and interviews. I paid attention to how native speakers pronounced words and formed sentences. I tried to imitate their pronunciation and intonation. Mr. John also encouraged us to practice speaking in front of a mirror. He said, "Watch your mouth movements and practice speaking clearly." I stood in front of the mirror and practiced speaking. It felt strange at first, but it helped me improve my pronunciation. Another useful technique was recording myself. I used my phone to record my voice while reading a passage or speaking. Then, I listened to the recording and compared it with native speakers. It helped me identify my mistakes and work on them. Mr. John also organized speaking activities in class. We practiced tongue twisters, read aloud, and did role plays. These activities helped us practice our pronunciation and gain confidence in speaking. Ahmed and I practiced speaking together. We took turns reading passages and correcting each other's pronunciation. We also practiced having conversations in English. It was a great way to improve our accent and speaking skills. Improving my accent was challenging, but I was determined. I practiced every day and used every opportunity to speak in English. Slowly, I noticed my pronunciation getting better. I felt more confident and happy with my progress. Learning a new language was a big challenge, but Mr. John gave us many tips to make it easier. He said, "Learning a new language is like a journey. Enjoy the process and keep moving forward." One important tip was to set small goals. Mr. John said, "Set daily and weekly goals. It will help you stay motivated." I set small goals for myself, like learning ten new words a day or practicing speaking for thirty minutes. Achieving these small goals made me feel proud and motivated. Another tip was to practice regularly. Mr. John said, "Consistency is key. Practice every day, even if it's for a short time." I made a daily routine for practicing English. I read, wrote. Listened and spoke in English every day. It helped me make steady progress. Mr. John also encouraged us to immerse ourselves in the language. He said, "Surround yourself with English as much as possible." I tried to think in English, write my diary in English, and even dream in English. I joined English speaking clubs and participated in activities where I could practice speaking English. Using technology was another helpful tip. There were many apps and online resources for learning English. I used language learning apps, watched online tutorials, and joined online forums. These resources provided additional practice and learning opportunities. Mr. John also advised us to be patient and persistent. He said, "Learning a new language takes time." Don't get discouraged by mistakes. I learned to be patient with myself. I celebrated my progress and learned from my mistakes. I reminded myself that every mistake was a step towards improvement. Learning a new language was a rewarding experience. With these tips and consistent effort, I was able to make great progress. I felt more confident and excited about my journey to becoming fluent in English. Building confidence in speaking English was important. Mr. John always encouraged us to speak up and not be afraid of making mistakes. He said, "Confidence comes with practice and positive thinking." One way to build confidence was to speak as much as possible. I participated in class discussions. Joined English speaking clubs and talked to my friends in English. The more I spoke, the more comfortable I felt. Mr. John also taught us positive thinking. He said, "Believe in yourself. You can do it."
I started to think positively about my English skills. I reminded myself of my progress and achievements. Positive thinking helped me feel more confident and motivated. Practicing with friends was also helpful. Ahmed and I practiced speaking together every day. We encouraged each other and gave positive feedback. It made practicing fun and less stressful. Public speaking activities in class also helped. We did presentations, debates, and storytelling. These activities pushed me out of my comfort zone and helped me build confidence in speaking English in front of others. I also practiced speaking in front of the mirror and recording myself. These practices helped me improve my pronunciation and gain confidence in my speaking skills. Building confidence was a gradual process, but with consistent practice and positive thinking, I felt more and more confident every day. I was proud of my progress and excited about my journey to fluency. Making friends was one of the best parts of my journey. I met people from different countries and cultures. We shared our experiences, learned from each other, and became good friends. At school, I made friends with Maria from Spain, Ahmed from Egypt, and Lee from China. We practiced English together, shared our cultures, and supported each other. We spent a lot of time together, studying, exploring the city, and having fun. We also had many school activities where I made new friends. We had sports day, music day, and culture day. These activities helped us bond and learn about each other's cultures. Outside of school, I joined an English speaking club. It was a great place to meet new people and practice speaking English. We had weekly meetings where we played games, had discussions, and did many fun activities. I made many new friends in the club. Making friends helped me improve my English and made my journey enjoyable. We helped each other with our studies, shared our challenges, and celebrated our successes together. My friends made my time in the big city happy and memorable. Balancing my job and studies was challenging, but I managed it with careful planning. I made a schedule that allowed me to study, work, and have some free time. Mr. Silva was very understanding and flexible with my work hours. I worked at the restaurant in the evenings and on weekends. During the day, I attended classes and studied. I used my free time at work to review my vocabulary and practice speaking with customers and colleagues. It was a busy schedule, but I enjoyed it. Time management was crucial. I made a to-do list every day prioritizing my tasks. I set aside specific times for studying, working, and relaxing. It helped me stay organized and focused. Mr. John also gave us tips on managing our time. He said, break your study sessions into smaller parts. Take short breaks to rest and refresh your mind. I followed his advice and found it very effective. It helped me stay productive and avoid burnout. Ahmed and I often studied together. We helped each other with homework and practice speaking. Having a study partner made it easier and more enjoyable. We also shared tips on managing our time and balancing work and studies. Balancing work and study was not easy, but with determination and good planning, I managed it well. It taught me the importance of time management and discipline. I felt proud of my ability to handle both responsibilities and continue making progress in my English learning journey. Living in a big city away from my family and village made me feel homesick at times. I missed my family, friends, and the familiar surroundings of my village. However, I found ways to overcome homesickness and stay positive. One way was to stay connected with my family. I called them regularly and shared my experiences. Hearing their voices and their encouragement made me feel better. My mother always said, 
We are proud of you, Alex. Keep going. Her words gave me strength. I also surrounded myself with friends. My friends at school and work became my second family. We supported each other and shared our challenges and successes. Spending time with them made me feel less lonely. Exploring the city helped too. I visited parks, museums, and cultural events. I discovered new places and met new people. It made me appreciate the opportunities one had and helped me enjoy my time in the city. Mr. John also gave us advice on dealing with homesickness. He said, focus on your goals and the positive aspects of your journey. Remember why you are here. I followed his advice and reminded myself of my goal to learn English and achieve my dreams. It helped me stay motivated and positive. Engaging in hobbies was another helpful strategy. I joined a soccer club and played with my friends. It was a great way to relax, have fun, and stay active. I also continued listening to music and watching movies in English. These activities helped me feel more connected and happy. Overcoming homesickness was a gradual process. By staying connected, surrounding myself with friends, exploring the city, and focusing on my goals, I managed to overcome it. I felt more comfortable and happy in my new environment, and my journey became more enjoyable. One of the most exciting parts of my journey was the cultural exchange. I met people from different countries and learned about their cultures. It was a rich and rewarding experience. At school, we had Culture Day, where we shared our traditional clothes, food, and customs. I wore a traditional Brazilian shirt and brought feijota, a Brazilian dish. My friends loved it and shared their traditional dishes too. We learned about each other's cultures and traditions. It was a lot of fun. Working at the restaurant also provided opportunities for cultural exchange. The staff came from different backgrounds, and we often shared our cultural experiences. Mr. Silva, who was originally from Portugal, shared stories about his country. I learned about Portuguese cuisine and traditions. One day, we had an international food day at the restaurant. Each staff member prepared a dish from their country. I made brigadeiros, a Brazilian sweet. Customers loved the idea and enjoyed trying different dishes. It was a great way to celebrate our diversity and learn from each other. Through these cultural exchanges, I gained a deeper appreciation for different cultures. I learned to be open-minded and respectful of others' traditions. It also helped me improve my English as I communicated with people from different backgrounds. Cultural exchange enriched my journey and made it more meaningful. It taught me the importance of diversity and the value of learning from others. I felt more connected to the world and appreciated the opportunities to experience different cultures. As months passed, I achieved several milestones in my English learning journey. Each milestone was a sign of my progress and a motivation to keep going. One significant milestone was passing an English language exam. Mr. John suggested taking a proficiency test to measure our progress. I studied hard, reviewed my notes, and practiced with Ahmed. The exam tested my reading, writing, listening, and speaking skills. When I received my results, I was thrilled to see that I had passed with good scores. It was a proud moment, and Mr. John congratulated me, saying, You have done a great job, Alex. Keep it up. Another milestone was feeling more confident in daily conversations. I could talk to customers at the restaurant without feeling nervous. I understood them better and responded more fluently. Mr. Silva noticed my improvement and praised my efforts. He said, Your English has improved a lot, Alex. You are doing great. I also started participating more in class. I answered questions 
joined discussions, and gave presentations. I felt more comfortable speaking in front of others. My classmates and Mr. John appreciated my participation, which boosted my confidence even more. Outside of school and work, I achieved the milestone of making more friends. My social circle grew, and I felt more connected. I joined different clubs and activities, met new people, and enjoyed various experiences. Each new friendship was a milestone in my journey. These milestones were a testament to my hard work and dedication. They showed me that my efforts were paying off and encouraged me to keep striving for more. I felt proud of my achievements and motivated to continue my journey towards fluency in English. With all my progress, I also learned the importance of balance and wellness. Studying and working hard were essential, but so was taking care of myself. Mr. John often reminded us, a healthy mind and body are crucial for effective learning. I made sure to get enough sleep every night. At first, I stayed up late to study, but I realized that lack of sleep made me tired and less focused. I set a regular bedtime and woke up early to study instead. It helped me feel more refreshed and alert. Eating well was also important. I made an effort to eat balanced meals with plenty of fruits and vegetables. Sometimes, I cooked meals from my home country, which made me feel more connected to my roots and provided a comforting taste of home. Exercise became a regular part of my routine. I joined a local soccer team and played matches on weekends. It was a great way to stay active, relieve stress, and meet new people. The physical activity helped me stay energized and focused on my studies and work. I also made time for relaxation and hobbies. Listening to music, reading books, and exploring the city were activities that helped me unwind. I learned that taking breaks and doing things I enjoyed were crucial for maintaining my well-being. Finding balance and focusing on wellness improved my overall productivity and happiness. I felt more capable of handling my responsibilities and enjoyed my journey even more. It was a valuable lesson that balanced living is essential for success and fulfillment. As my English improved and I gained more confidence, I started thinking about my future goals. Mr. John encouraged us to set long-term goals and work towards them. He said, learning English opens many doors. Think about where you want to go and what you want to achieve. I thought about my dreams and aspirations. I wanted to pursue higher education and a career that involved helping others. I researched different universities and courses that interested me. Mr. John helped me with the application process and gave me valuable advice. I also started looking for opportunities to volunteer and gain experience in my field of interest. Volunteering not only helped me practice my English, but also gave me a sense of purpose and direction. I volunteered at a community center, helping children with their homework and organizing activities. It was a rewarding experience that reinforced my desire to make a positive impact. At the restaurant, Mr. Silva offered me more responsibilities. He said, You are doing great, Alex. I think you are ready for more challenges. I started helping with inventory management and training new staff. These new roles helped me develop leadership skills and learn more about the business side of the restaurant. Preparing for the future was an exciting and motivating process. Setting clear goals and working towards them gave me a sense of direction and purpose. I felt more confident and ready to take on new challenges and opportunities. As my time in the big city came to an end, I reflected on my journey. It was a journey filled with challenges, learning, growth, and achievements. 
I thought about how far I had come from the day I first arrived, nervous and uncertain, to now, confident and fluent in English. I was grateful for all the support I received from my teachers, friends, and colleagues. Mr. John's lessons, Mr. Silva's encouragement, and my friend's companionship played a significant role in my success. I learned that with determination, hard work, and support, anything is possible. Returning to my village, I felt a sense of accomplishment. I was proud of my achievements and excited to share my experiences with my family and friends. I knew that my journey was not over. It was just the beginning. I was ready to take on new challenges and continue growing. Reflecting on my journey, I realized that learning English was more than just acquiring a new language. It was about building confidence, making connections, embracing new cultures, and preparing for the future. It was a transformative experience that shaped me into a more capable and confident person. With a grateful heart and a determined spirit, I looked forward to the next chapter of my life, knowing that I had the skills, knowledge, and confidence to achieve my dreams and make a positive impact in the world.